Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to our second session of the day. Uh, we are starting with a folio overview um, with a whole bunch of excellent speakers. Uh, we're gonna hope to keep everything in our time limits. Um, just as a reminder, uh, this is being recorded. Feel free to use the chat box and please uh, use the Q&A box as we will work to get through as many of those as possible at the end of the presentations. And with that, I will uh, pass things off to you, Boaz. Hello, everybody. Uh, good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are. Uh, my name is Boaz Nadavmanis. I'm the University Librarian in Lehigh University Library. Uh, welcome to this session about folio and exciting developments. Uh, on all uh, parts of it, governance, uh, operational, and just people that uh, do uh, implementations and go for it. So we have two parts today. Uh, the first part is the update about the Folio uh, project and uh, how we do things now. Uh, and then the second part is a kind of quick run with testimonials from different libraries uh, going live uh, and working on Folio. Uh, Lehigh went live in August, and uh, we are so very excited uh, about uh, where we are right now. So uh, we are happy to be here. Uh, so I'm going to start by just introducing the three uh, members of the first section. Um, there are three people. Michael Rell, um, he has 30 years of experience in leading teams, organizations, technology, and software products. And Mike is currently the director of Index Data and the chair of the Folio Community Council. He has worked with the Folio community over the last three years as the convener of Tech Council, the Folio Security Working Group, and the Folio Vision Strategy Working Group, as well as members of the Capacity Planning Team, a member of Exec PC, and a convener of the Folio Governance Task Force. Uh, after Mike, Jesse uh, Konecki will be talking. He's the Director of Acquisitions and E-Resources Licensing at Cornell University Library. He served on the Folio Product Council since 2016 and recently as the interim chair of PC. And then uh, Anya Arnold, uh, the manager of Folio Consulting Services from EBSCO will be speaking. Uh, Anya has uh, more than 15 years uh, where she led collaborative groups of librarian staff developers and vendors to implement, develop and enhance library systems and procedures for li libraries and consortia. She's been a part of numerous strategic program development and technology initiatives focusing on discovery and delivery of library materials. Anya has collaborated on several high-profile system change projects for consortia, including Orbis Cascade, Pascal, CSU System, Ohio Net, and Boston Library Consortium, to name a few. Anya is an MLIS from the University of Pittsburgh and lives in Mukilteo, Washington. So uh, here we go. Uh, I think we start from you, uh, Mike. Go for it. Thank you. Thanks, and I am sharing my slides. I feel like I need to go faster now because those introductions were really long. We've all done a lot of stuff, I guess. People have done a lot. So uh, first part I'm going to take you through is what Folio is and why we all think it's special. So Folio is an acronym. It stands for the future, or it stands for future of libraries is open. In case you haven't had the opportunity to see Folio in person, this is the initial screen after logging in. You can see the app bar across the top. Um, it's very exciting. Folio is actually uh, three different things. Um, it's a community-owned library services platform. So it's software that works. It's, uh, as you heard from Boaz, uh, Lehigh is running the software. It's several people you're gonna hear about later are running the software. So it's a piece of software a large modern system, but it's also an active open source software product, product, project. And so we have, and I'll talk about a little bit about this later, we have uh, a, a very in, uh, large and intense community that are creating features and developing software, testing things. And so it's an active development project. And then the third piece is it's a vibrant and active community. So, um, and I have more slides on, on the details of that. But so there's three pieces to Folio. It's the software, it's an, an active project, and then there's a great vibrant community. In terms of the platform, uh, it's, it's really created, and, and one of the goals initially for Folio was to create a platform for innovation. So we wanted to allow 
to create a modern um, environment where people could create solutions for the future. And so it's API driven, it's based on microservices, it's a single page application. And as I mentioned on the first screen, it's sort of app centric. There's an app bar across the top and, and the notion of sort of dividing functionality into extendable apps. Uh, the platform itself is very extensible. So it's based on, uh, there's a, an API gateway called Okapi that is uh, sort of separates the front end stuff from the back end stuff and manages those microservices and routes requests to the appropriate module. There is a common uh, UI framework called Stripes that allows people to develop apps that ensure in such a way that it ensures that they're common, uh, the look and feel is the same. It saves developers time because there are common libraries that are able to be used. It handles accessibility and, and other types of things in that UI framework. And then the overall architecture is modular. So, uh, Functionality is sort of um, able to be carved out into only the, in the modules are able to be built such that they're only the features that are necessary for that module. There's no bloat, there's no large monolithic type of software. And then the other thing about the platform is it's all community owned and it's all open source. Currently we have a number of apps and I just wanted to put this slide up to, to give people a feel for all the breadth of functionality that's available in Folio. So it certainly is uh, able to run uh, small and large libraries alike. And it's, uh, there's a lot of sophistication in many of these apps. From a software development perspective, Folio is an active and mature project. So uh, on GitHub, uh, it's, as I said, it's open source so people can go and, and peruse the software uh, code and repositories. There are 268 repositories and over 200 contributors to those repositories. We're currently in a uh, cycle of releasing three uh, new versions uh, and updates per year. We have right now 17 active teams of developers that are working with uh, 15 product owners and seven scrum masters. So the processes that we use in the software to develop the software are primarily scrum based. And so there's a, a series of uh, meetings and rituals that we sort of honor in the Scrum uh, development methodology. Another measure of maturity, I think, is sort of how we assess the work that we're doing. And so there are key, there are several key uh, quality metrics that we track. Um, we look at unit test code coverage. We look at automated test coverage. We have performance targets. We do regular performance testing on new releases, uh, and new functionality. We look at regression rates, if bugs come out, whether they're marked as regressions or not, and sort of do, um, uh, do assessments and analysis on where those regressions are coming from. We look at escape defects and so forth. So from my perspective, um, as I mentioned, or as was mentioned of a long history in technology, it's nice to see that this open project has such a robust um, development process behind it. The community for Folio is really made up of individuals from several different types of organizations. Um, there are librarians, developers, designers, other technologists, other sub subject matter experts that are involved. Those are sort of the individuals. And uh, they're coming from organizations like libraries, service providers, and vendors. And so it's really a great blend of commercial and non-commercial, academic, public libraries, other types of special libraries, consortia, uh, coming together to try to, to build solutions that all of the uh, members of the community really need. And uh, Folio, Folio for sure is open. So I wanna highlight that. These are uh, a couple of pictures from some early design meetings. And so just trying to emphasize the collaborative nature of the development, here's a designer one of our lead designers that's sort of facilitating discussions on features and functionality, um, ranking features, ranking ideas, and uh, doing mockups. We're, we, one of the things that we've done with Folio is started with sort of a UI first, a UX first approach um, to creating Folio. Um, the community around Folio is again, uh, all about the people. We have 1,800 people on Folio Slack right now. So it's a really wide, diverse international group. 
of, of people that are contributing. Uh, one of the last things that we've done as a project is ranked um, features towards an, the next release. And we had 102 organizations that voted on points. So again, that just speaks to sort of the size and, um, and health of the Folio community. So uh, one of my questions was, what, what is Folio, which I, hopefully I've answered that for you, at least at a high level, and then why is Folio special? So it is the only library services platform that is modern, community-owned, and provides that innovative platform in which new solutions can be built or open. And I have to say that also Folio is special because the people are special. All of the people that are working on Folio, super collaborative, super engaged, super passionate about Folio and uh, open systems. A little bit about Folio's governance model. So there are three councils that are uh, elected by the community that uh, sort of steer the ship, if you will. So there's the community council, which is responsible for sort of general oversight, the overall health of the community, uh, membership, what are membership dues, um, and then overall communication, for example, in um, being uh, participating in WolfCon or other, other needs across the community. Uh, community council works closely with the product council who is really in charge of the roadmap and feature prioritization and and sort of the planning of what the software and functionality will actually do. Uh, Product Council has, a, has uh, a number of special interest groups or SIGs that they work with to help flesh out functionality and define requirements. And then there's a technical council that sort of sets the bar for what the technical standards are, the best practices. They help facilitate architectural discussions. They define some of those quality requirements and, and integration processes and so forth. So collectively, these three councils coordinate with each other to make sure that um, those three things that make up Folio, the software itself, the software development project, and then the community are all sort of humming at a, at a high level. Uh, if you visit wiki.folio.org, you, you get um, a, a slew of information on all of the groups and activities. So we encourage that. And now I'm going to transition a little bit into talking about the vision and strategic objectives for Folio. So Folio was uh, born sort of in 2016 and, and the original groups that sort of came together to start the Folio project had a certain vision um, for what they wanted to, to Folio to grow up to be. And as libraries started to go live and develop um, more solutions and new requirements uh, came about, it, it, it felt like it was time to sort of step back and redefine sort of the vision and some of the strategy behind uh, what we're trying to accomplish with Folio. So task late last year, the goal was to review this vision and strategy and, and uh, especially compared to the, what was outlined originally. The idea is that this, this uh, vision and strategic objectives will be reviewed annually. And um, over here on the right, I have sort of a diagram of, because everybody sort of defines vision and strategy a little differently. And what the, the tack that we took was to define a vision which is broad and very high level. And then sort of the next level of detail are these strategic objectives that allow us to realize the vision and then uh, strategic initiatives are even more specific from that. And as we thought about the things that are strategic, we wanted to think about a number of different dimensions to make sure that we covered sort of the whole breadth of what the Folio community and project needed. So we thought about community as well as the features and functionality. We wanted to compare Folio to, to other pieces in the marketplace. We wanted to have high standards for reliability, quality, stability, and performance. Obviously, we want the project to be sustainable, and we think it's important that Photo delivers a, a solid total cost of ownership um, metric. So the vision that the group came up with was to be an open community supporting the evolving needs of global libraries with a platform that serves us now and into the future. There are, uh, we looked at timeframes as well for the strategic objectives and initiatives. And so I'm just gonna rattle off some selected ones here. So again, uh, high, high uh, needs and requirements for quality performance and stability. Um, an international community that's active and diverse, very important for us. Um, 
we want a community created roadmap and uh, a lot of transparency there. And then uh, obviously at the end of the day, we want the product to be able to run um, in libraries. And then we looked at longer term, sort of a year and then three to five years out, you can see that we've got some targets for how widely adopted Folio would be. And um, we're looking at implementer satisfaction ratings. And so one of the things that's been fun is to have the blend of librarians and vendors, we sort of get around uh, 360 view of uh, product development and looking at the ways that we sort of assess how quality the quality and success of the product and how we plan for that going forward. So looking at su success ratings for implementers, um, looking for innovative features that aren't available in other systems, uh, uh, cost effectiveness, uh, a wildly enthusiastic and engaged user community. And then again, those, those more detailed things uh, in the strategic uh, sort of uh, series of levels uh, are strategic initiatives. And so again, I'm not gonna read all of these, but you know, SWOT analysis, uh, horizon scanning for innovative processes, um, uh, support for non-MARC-based data models, uh, entity-based data models. Um, and, and so there's just a lot of things here. The full list is available on our wiki, uh, as, as all of our documentation is, and, um, and so you can go visit that. And so with that, I think I'm going to hand it over to Jesse to speak, and I'll, I'll try to work on the slides for you, Jesse. Thanks a lot, Mike. Um, <clears throat> with the recently changed uh, governance model uh, for the Folio project, uh, one thing that was uh, clarified is the official role of the product council, um, which is uh, primarily to maintain the folio roadmap to reflect the best interests of the librarians and users and to work with the development teams to deliver the roadmap as efficiently as possible. Um, next slide, please. Um, and uh, folio is currently having, as Mike mentioned, three named releases per year <clears throat> uh, just in May. We released uh, the IRIS version, which um, a number of libraries are in the middle of implementing uh, as we speak. And um, But upcoming uh, throughout the rest of this year is uh, Juniper and Kiwi set for August and November. And these all need to have uh, the things that the community wants uh, put into them. Uh, uh, identified, uh, incorporated, and, and prioritized um, across that, the whole community and the development effort that's available uh, for us. So um, uh, on the heels of the new governance model, um, the Product Council is working out a new roadmap process. Um, just in April, we uh, released essentially the process for doing this new, the, uh, the roadmap and uh, continue having a continuous road mapping, uh, roadmap work going on in the project. And that really focuses on definitions, sort of a shared set of definitions of what we're talking about with the roadmap. Um, the process, the what are the groups and how, how do we gather all that, uh, all the feedback to develop the roadmap. And then communication is <clears throat> how do we communicate this out um, in a way that uh, is understandable to uh, library and vendor decision makers and uh, as well as then developers like as we sort of uh, drill down into what the roadmap means. Um, so be looking for more about uh, specifics about the roadmap in the coming months. And thank you now on to Anya. Good morning. My name is Anya Arnold and I'm going to be talking about implementing Folio because not only are we developing Folio as a community, but as a community, we're also implementing Folio. Um, so for successful migration for any project, you have to understand why you're doing the things that you are currently doing and to be able to then transfer those to um, this new system. So at least the whys, not necessarily the hows. So if we understand the whys, then we can articulate, and we can move on to the next slide. Um, we can articulate what our assumptions are about what the system does and what it doesn't do. Um, 
And I think we all kind of get into this. Um, I love this comic strip because it does show we have the tendency to, to assume things like, oh, you know what I mean when I say check in. Well, no, some systems say discharge, some systems say charge. So what do you actually mean when you say check in or even scan in and how many times that you have to do it in the process? So really laying out what all those things mean to you as an individual library and staff is extremely important. Um, and with change, all change elicits um, a scale. Um, we kind of lose faith and we start bargaining um, and then we kind of go up and we accept what the new process is. So libraries that are changing their, their software also go through that same cycle. And not only are we implementing, but we're also developing. So we're bringing back new ideas to the SIGs and to the POs at the same time. So it really makes the product of Folio better and um, ongoing sustainable. So if we move on, we can just say, um, how many steps does it take to migrate a library? And those in the US will know um, this little owl. It's from a, a commercial about a lollipop. Um, and the world may never know um, is really is really the answer. Um, we do have project plans out there that um, the first iteration is 168 steps, but you know that's only the first iteration. You know things happen, and we have to go back and reiterate um, and do things, and and folio changes while we're implementing, so we have to keep going. So speaking of implementation. We do have lots of libraries live on Folio. Just two years ago, we only had Chalmers live on Folio, and Marie's going to talk about that. Um, and then last year, we had Missouri State University come live. Um, and just this year, or, and, and Simmons, I'm sorry, Simmons, um, but the, just this year, we've just had Skidmore and Okanagan go live um, Monday and Tuesday of this week. Um, and we've had Lehigh, Washington, Jefferson, St. Thomas, Warner, St. Vincent's, and Biblioteca de Frenzy. And I probably butchered that name. I apologize. Um, and we also have libraries on ERM First, where they're just implemented the ERM portion of Folio, but they're planning on implementing the rest of Folio a um, little bit later on in the development cycle. So it's Cornell, five colleges, and Duke. And then we have libraries that are only interested in the ERM apps that are live on Folio. So um, there's the six there listed, but there's many more coming this summer um, if we move on. Um, so um, this summer we have um, about uh, five libraries going live on ERM only, three um, going live on ERM first, and then oh, about 12 in my quick, quick math. Um, or 13 going live on Folio this summer. Okay, we can move on. And beyond summer, we have a whole list of folks that are um, going live as well. So this is a very, a very active group of folks and soon the community will have more people that are live on Folio um, and that will be wonderful um, for, for progression of Folio. And that concludes my whirlwind of slides. Thank you, Anya. That was so exciting. I love those pictures. This is part yeah. of being in Folio, right? Fun, the, the, the F is for fun. The F is for fun, that's right. <laughs> and there is a lot of that. So uh, I think uh, we're going to go to the testimonials uh, section now. And, uh, you know, if you have questions, put the, them in the Q&A. And then we hope to actually have time uh, to get to them. So I'm going to introduce now the testimonials, folks. Uh, I'm going to try and be quick uh, or quicker. Uh, so uh, we're going to have uh, Marie Widgeson uh, from Chalmers University. Uh, she's working with acquisitions of print and electronic books, ERM and discovery systems at Chalmers University of Technology Library in Gutenberg. Uh, Sweden, the last couple of years I've been busy implementing and running Folio, and I'm learning more and more also about circulation library system administration. Uh, from Leipzig University Library, we have Bjorn Muschel. Uh, Bjorn is Deputy Head of Digital Services and Folio Implementation Lead at Leipzig University Library, Germany. Uh, he's a member of the Users Management SIG and drives the progress of open access business functionalities at Folio. 
Uh, we have Felix Hamme from ZBW. Uh, Felix works as a metadata and systems librarian at ZBW, Leibniz uh, Information Center for Economics in Kiel, Germany. He supports Folio's development as a member of the Metadata Management SIG and the ERM subgroup. Uh, we got Karen Newberry uh, from Duke University Library. Uh, she's the head of library systems and integration support at Duke University. She's been involved in open source projects for libraries for 10 years and is a member of the product council and the implementers group. And we got uh, Brooks Travis from Missouri State University. Uh, Brooks Travis is the IT coordinator for Missouri State University Libraries, the first North American library to fully migrate to Folio. Uh, he also serves as interim PO for requests, PO for enrich integration, and is an active participant in RA and UM6, uh, Folio implementers and the product uh, roadmap, roadmap group. And last, we got uh, from Shanghai uh, Public Library, uh, Kevin Liu uh, uh, is the deputy director of the Shanghai Library with staff of 850. Uh, he's the vice chairman of Shanghai Library Society, established uh, the Folio Development and Application Consortium in Shanghai, directing and coordinating over a dozen companies to provide upgrade services to nearly 20 district libraries in Shanghai. And with him, we're going to have Mr. Zhao Lei, uh, is from Qing, uh, I'm sorry about the pronunciation, Jiangsu, Chiangtu. Uh, maybe, <laughs> a local library software company in China before joining Jiaqiu. Uh, Lei has worked for Ex Libris Beijing for more than 10 years, engaged in the implementation, support, and localized development for Aleph and Alma. Lei is familiar with the library systems and requirements of Chinese customers. Now he leads a team for, of more than 30 people and focuses on follow development. As a project leader, Lei is participating in the development implementation of the Folio project for Shanghai Library. So done with that, and let's get to the testimonials themselves. Felix, I think you're, yes. Excellent, thank you. Uh, hi, so I'm Marie from Chalmers, and Chalmers University is a, a small to mid-sized university in Sweden. And our main, uh, uh, we have a lot of uh, uh, electronic media, but also, of course, print circulation. We previously had some pretty large uh, library systems, uh, but a few years ago, we took a deep dive uh, uh, evaluating the systems uh, available and our needs. And we found that uh, the most important for us is uh, the end user experience. Uh, the valuable, uh, valuable flexibility a lot, ease of integration with other systems to, and to keep workflows simple for the library administrators. Uh, we wanted to be a hosted customer, not hosting ourselves, but uh, we wanted no vendor lock-in. We were tired of that. Uh, we wanted to have be a part of an engaged community, and we wanted uh, transparency. Uh, next, please. So uh, uh, that led us to uh, uh, becoming a better partner with EBSCO and agreeing to become the first implementer of this new exciting system folio. So we actually went live with Folio already in September, uh, almost two years ago now, uh, with full circulation and ERM. So we are using Folio together with the EBSCO uh, discovery system and knowledge base, and also open Athens for uh, login for uh, library staff and also for patrons to EDS. Next, please. So you can wonder how this uh, went. Uh, it was very early folio days. We were actually going live on Daisy. Uh, so all the functionality uh, was not there and we had to rethink uh, a lot. But actually, I think we will keep uh, some of those workflows because we kind of like them. 
surprisingly enough, we have had no downtime and we have also had five successful upgrades and will soon hopefully successfully upgrade to Iris as well. Uh, the print circulation, it works fine. And what we really like is the flexible ERM. And we have um, uh, the Patreon facing uh, uh, is only EDS and we have the Patreon functionality there and it works, uh, but uh, there are some improvements that should be made there. Next, please. So uh, since then, we have been busy, really, really busy. Um, well, um, there are so many things that you need to do both uh, before and after, and we have been doing them. <laughs> and we also have a ch had a change of systems librarians, and um, uh, we have experienced that actually the folio circulation administration is quite easy to uh, learn. And I think I myself is a perfect example of that. I'm originally an ERM librarian, the discovery person, but I'm now a circulation librarian as well. Next, please. Uh, some of those things that we have made is uh, uh, integrations uh, with um, for example, a self-registration form and the PIN code change using the APIs. And uh, uh, that has been really fun to do. Next, please. We have also used our old uh, user interface for displaying of license terms. Now uh, with Folio APIs instead, and that's much more flexible than we uh, made it before. And next, please. Uh, we are just, just a few weeks ago, actually, we integrated uh, uh, Folio with our homegrown interlibrary loan system. Uh, we like that a lot, so we will still manage uh, the uh, requests uh, there. But uh, when we receive the book, we transfer it to Folio using the APIs and handle the rest in Folio. And then, what are we looking forward to? Uh, we, the biggest pain point for us has been the requesting functionality, which is now on item level, and we want to have it on title level instead. And we uh, think and hope we will have that in the Kiwi release this uh, November. Uh, we are also looking forward to seeing all functionality and technical solutions uh, mature in Folio and to make use of them. And this, the slides that Anya showed with all the onboarding libraries uh, is so nice to see. And we are looking forward to collaborating with all of you. And I think also a Swedish library will join us. Uh, with uh, EDS, uh, we are looking forward to the new EDS uh, uh, interface and uh, the improved patron functionality that should be there. And also the possibility now uh, to rework our local data flows for print material. So that's all for me. Thank you. Okay, go ahead and go on the next slide, Felix. I'm Brooks Travis uh, from Missouri State University. Um, give you a little context for our implementation. Um, Missouri State's probably 24,000 students, an FTE around 8,000. We're a doctoral professional school. Um, four libraries on three campuses. That includes a K-12 school library on our, <clears throat> on our main campus. Combined annual budget of approximately 6.6 .6 million, about 45 full-time employees. And we were previously a member of the Mobius Consortium, which is a Missouri-based consortium of um, public and uh, educational libraries for over 20 years, running a shared Sierra environment um, together with 10 institutions. Next slide. Um, some of our core requirements in selecting a new LSP, uh, we wanted something with significant cost savings, uh, something that was modern, ERM, web-based, extensible, supported single sign-on, had open APIs, uh, something that helped us avoid vendor lock-in. Um, we wanted opportunities to reevaluate our existing processes and workflows. And we wanted some more direct influence over platform development as well. Next slide. 
um, kind of our timeline, hosting, setup, and apps. Um, we selected Folio in late September of 2019. Uh, we selected Folio services from EBSCO as our hosting provider. Um, we were live on Folio ERM in mid-January of 2020, um, live on inventory acquisition, finance, circulation, and courses June 5th, 2020. And we had, as of about mid-March 2020, a 100% virtual implementation process um, online because of the COVID pandemic. Um, and we are using Azure Active Directory SAML for our staff login and Open Athens with EDS for our patron account access. Next slide. Um, rethinking a few workflows in the library. Um, in ERM, our staff uh, manually migrated data from our previous access database system uh, into agreements and e-holdings. Um, they scanned in all of our paper documents and attached them as supporting documents to agreements and licenses in Folio. Um, and we're now using Microsoft Planner to track renewals um, with links into and out of Folio. And we're also storing our scanned documents in Team SharePoint sites as well with links in Folio out to those stored documents in the cloud. Next slide. On circulation, um, Folio's flexibility in the circulation rule system has given us greater freedom to adjust our policies in response to changing needs of our libraries and our patrons particularly over the past year, that's been really important for us. Um, we've shifted our primary request type over the past year from hold to recall um, for patron initiated requests. And we're looking forward to some of the changes that are coming in IRS to deal with age to lost items in those scenarios. Um, and we also took the opportunity when we were migrating to eliminate our late fines and, uh, for most of our loans and shift to an actual cost loss item fee structure, though that's a bit of a pain point for us at the moment. Next slide. Um, some room for improvement for us with Folio, some of our current pain points. Um, we're missing full actual costs, lost item fee support, um, and fees and fines. Um, we're looking forward to that development in the, over the next year or so. Um, lack of OAI PMH support with holdings and item information um, for our discovery um, catalog integration. A bit of a pain point for us. We've had to roll kind of a process internally to export and upload those um, on an ongoing basis. And data imports, ongoing reliability and performance concerns are also causing us um, to have to put in some extra work to make that process work. Next slide. Now takeaways for us in this process. Um, for us, getting involved in the community right away was critical to the success of our migration. Um, there was, we, it really helped to have our people engaged in the SIGs um, from an early time period and sitting in on meetings because a lot of documentation gaps at the time, and it really helped us kind of get, get people up to speed quicker. Um, Folio is not just a tool that we're using, but it's also one that we're helping to build. Um, and that was, again, another one of our primary goals going into this process. Um, involvement in the Folio community has given us a broader community of practice uh, to learn from and collaborate with. And as new features are added to Folio, we're actively evaluating how they impact our workflows and policies. And I believe that is it for me. Okay, hello everyone. And um, we go straight to this slide. Yes, thanks Felix. Just to give you an idea of the size of our library, we are 228 employees and operate 12 branches across the city. And uh, we serve around 30,000 students plus uh, university staff, which are around, I don't know exactly to be honest, but around 2,500 university employees. Next slide, please. <clears throat> we are working in a regional project context in Saxony, which benefits from European funds. So there are three more libraries here interested in Folio. And at this project phase, uh, we decided to build up our own Folio platform with several tenants. And we are foc focusing on ERM first implementation at the moment, but also addresses the full implementation. Next slide, please. We have uh, two tenants productive uh, for, for our library and for the Saxon State and University Library in Dresden with ERM, including the acquisition for ERM. And you can see here the list of apps in production. So it's the ERM suite and acquisition suite. Thanks. No, no, Felix, that's okay. <laughs> Thank you. 
we were able to migrate a quite large number of agreements, licenses and organizations from our pre previous uh, self-developed ERM system. Uh, you can see the numbers here. But uh, we had to omit the migration of cost elements because that was uh, too too difficult, which means that our e-resource team had to enter purchase orders and invoices for twenty for the year 2020 subsequently. And um, regarding the use of an external knowledge base for journal packages, I think, and then I know Felix will talk about more in detail, so I will skip this for my presentation. So next slide, please. Yes, um, testimonial. So to summarize this slide, our e-resource team is very happy with Folio, with the Folio software itself. Um, and they very appreciate the fast response time in the community, which was and which is extremely helpful uh, in our processes. Uh, we can move on to the next slide. So uh, why did we decide for Folio? We believe that our own development efforts are more sustainable in this international platform than just developing for ourselves. And with Folio, we really have the choice to use different available resources, be it um, our own human resources or financial resources at any level. So we have the choice to do things by our own or to contract a commercial partner and um, this economic perspective on this platform model is actually the key reason we decided for Folio um, in, in 2018. Next slide. And I can say that it really works. So we developed several own apps for the community e-usage the e-usage app, um, as well as um, two apps for just internal use. And we participate in feature development in order to close our own functional gaps. And we also contracted um, companies, Index Data and KIN for differ different uh, functional areas and consulting, which works just as well. Next one, please. So our future plans. Uh, what we have to do now is to develop a long-term business and operation plan for, for our libraries, university libraries in Saxony. And um, we have to help closing gaps uh, in order to do a full migration. And uh, we have to integrate Folio in a national data flow, in our German national data flows. But this is to a large extent more organizational issue than a technical issue. And we hope that we can um, do a full migration within the next um, four years. Next one, please. Yes, that's, that's what I have. Um, thanks for listening and feel free to contact me if you have any questions. And I hand over to Felix. Good day, everyone. My name is uh, Felix Hemmer. I am uh, working at uh, CBW. Um, Um, that is um, the world's uh, largest research infrastructure for economic literature. Um, we are live with Folio since 2020. Uh, Folio is hosted at um, our uh, yeah, GBV library network, which we are part of. Um, we have chosen to do an ERM first implementation and that contains um, the core ERM apps agreements and licenses, um, as well as organizations um, to manage our vendors and content providers um, and local KB admin in order to, uh, in order to connect GoKB as an external knowledge base. Um, yeah, we are engaged in open access and open science, and that also includes um, open source software development. And we have therefore decided to support Folio um, by contributing some subject matter experts um, back to the project. Our main focus during the last year has been um, on the following topics. So first, we wanted uh, to enter our license data into Folio licenses. We did not use an ERM system before, so we, uh, it was a full manual process and no migration um, at this point. 
Um, second, we wanted to gain experience with e-resource management in an external KB and also in Folio's internal um, or local knowledge base. And third, we want to um, ingest package data and connect it then with Folio um, agreements. For us, this was the, is the first time that we can uh, record our licenses and their uh, related terms uh, systematically in a system. Um, we did a lot of coordination um, internally with various departments on the sensible conditions. So here are some topics um, that we uh, covered um, in, in folio licenses. So there are terms on text and data mining, post cancellation access, um, remote access conditions, which are especially important during the pandemic, metadata delivery details, and of course, ILL terms. And we did create um, a handbook uh, in parallel um, that we uh, yeah, want to share with the German speaking community. So um, I want to uh, show you uh, how it looks like to use Folio with um, GoKB, the global open knowledge base. Um, there was a talk yesterday. Um, our vision and aim is that packages um, are managed in this uh, local KB by a community of libraries and also vendors and content providers. And what you can see on this um, screenshot is a list of Springer packages um, of the economics and finance collection. Um, Package detail um, contains every title that is included in this package um, and uh, a package title in this uh, case is an expression um, of a title instance and a title instance then contains yeah, things like um, identifiers and um, you can um, see the package um, availability or the availability of the title in another, uh, another package. Um, you can connect um, GoKB to Folio. Um, the metadata then is harvested via uh, um, an OAI PMH feed and uh, inserted into Folio's local KB. Um, packages and the uh, related e-resources can then access directly in Folio um, and link to agreements as agreement lines, what we did here. So you have all the information you need, like um, title on platform URLs, you see um, the package availability, um, and you see um, via which agreements uh, you subscribe to a title. Our next steps um, include the, uh, we want to incorporate additional license types into Folio. Um, we want to test new apps and take them into production. So that includes ERM comparisons, which was released um, with the Honeysuckle release. We are really looking forward uh, to get our hands uh, on the new app ERM dashboard, uh, which is a recent uh, um, app. And we want to test e usage um, that was developed by the colleagues in Leipzig. And the third and largest uh, point is we want to integrate Folio into the German library system infrastructure. Um, if you had time to participate uh, on the first day of WolfCon, uh, you may, uh, maybe saw um, the diagram that Kirsten and Martina shared um, about the, the infrastructure here in Germany. It's quite, quite large. And that's it for me. You can go to the next slide. My name is Karen Newberry. I'm the head of library systems and integration support here at Duke University. Um, we have uh, seven libraries as part of the Duke University libraries and uh, four professional school libraries. Um, and we also support uh, Duke Kunshan University Library. Next, please. Uh, just some background facts. We were started in uh, 1924, so a mere babe in arms compared to some of our German partners. <laughs> um, we became involved in the OA community in uh, 2008, uh, and then in the Folio community around 2016. Uh, we have about 20 library staff uh, representing all of the libraries or each of the libraries, I should say, that are involved in the Folio community. Uh, and we 
sit on uh, most of the, or all of the uh, special interest groups. Um, we've also involved in implementers group, product council, technical council, community council, and uh, we have uh, donated a uh, product donor as well. Next, please. Why Folio? Uh, we uh, are dedicated in the libraries here to open source software. We already use a number of uh, pieces of software and are involved in the communities uh, for those software. Uh, we want to have more uh, control over our solutions. Uh, and as said before uh, by one of the presenters, um, we want to avoid uh, the vendor lock-in um, that we've experienced in the past. Um, we are currently hosted by Index Data, who is a trusted uh, industry partner in that, and uh, we have really enjoyed uh, the opportunity to work with them. Next, please. Our local implementation structure uh, somewhat mirrors the uh, implementation structure, or the uh, special interest groups, excuse me, of the community. We have uh, resource access, metadata management, resource management, and then an offshoot of resource management, the electronic resource management. Uh, above that, we have a steering group that includes the conveners from each of the implementation teams and the working groups. And the working groups help the implementation teams as they go through the process of implementing their apps. And my team, Library Systems and Integration Support, uh, helps support all of that work uh, along with uh, coding the data migrations and integrations uh, that are required. Next, please. Uh, in July 2020, we went live with ERM-focused applications, uh, including agreements, licenses, and e-usage, uh, along with organizations, users, and settings. Uh, this allowed um, us to actually use an ERM. We did not have one before that. So this allowed the ERM implementation team the opportunity to move off their various spreadsheets and storage tools and workflow management tools. Uh, it allowed them to review our over 1,000 current licenses. They did manually create each of the license records and thank you to our intern for that. Um, and we've now been able to uh, have links out to an updated storage infrastructure uh, for to hold those actual license documents. And I believe the ERM team is uh, very happy with um, what we've done so far and are looking forward to adding more apps to that as we go forward with our full implementation. Next, please. Uh, this month, in about two weeks, we're going to be adding uh, two more apps to our production instance, uh, courses and inventory. Our courses app is going to provide um, links to uh, Sakai, which is our CMS. And that is, that's being done by the development of an LTI tool that our local developer uh, has uh, made for us and also contributed back to the community. Uh, so we thank him for that. Um, it's been great working with Index Data. Uh, they have helped us think through our technical details as we move apps into production. Um, they've been quick to respond to any issues or questions that have come up and uh, have been expert in handling our instances and upgrades. Thank you. Okay, can you hear me? Okay, this is Kevin Liu from Shanghai Library. We have more than about 300 branch libraries in total, but only the main library has partially launched the Folio circulation module on April 18th. The details will be reported later by our partner and the project director, Mr. Zhou Lei from Jiangsu Jiatu Company. I would like to say a few words about the current situation of the Chinese folio community and the promotion plan 
for the next one or two years. Uh, there will be expected that at least the four or five libraries may join Shanghai Library to implement Folio. As you may know, the library software market in China is shared by both local and overseas companies. Uh, local companies have made rapid progress in technologies in recent years and, uh, and have st started to transform their original system into cloud-based XAAS services, implement microservices architecture while de developing many applications other than the classic modules and uh, holding the vast majority of the market share. And overseas companies, with only a few exceptions, gradually withdrawing from Chinese market. But of course, they still have some influence. China has invested a lot in old libraries of all kinds, demanding better outputs and results. While a lot of new libraries have been constructed all over the country. So there is an urgent need for a new round of system upgrades. At present, with the advocacy of the National Library of China and the, some leading university libraries, the smart library becomes a buzzword, uh, which means using various AI and machine learning technologies to have more accurate personalized services and more self services. Folio provides a platform with a with the potential to create unlimited smart services and the new business models that makes everyone look forward to it. Our current plan is to form an open library alliance to promote the open source and the community-based application of Folio to publish specifications and best practices for the reference of library circle to let them recognize our approaches and uh, have a greater impact. Shanghai Library is very lucky to have a very professional and a skilled team, which lead by Jiangsu Jiatu Company uh, to help us on the de deployment. Now, Mr. Zhou Lei from the team will talk about our approaches and experiences. We will have Mr. Jiang Sha, the technical leader, to report some more specific technical issues in short, in short talk session. By now, the biggest issue we encountered is the performance issue. If Folio cannot overcome it, we have to assume that the upgrade to Folio project of Shanghai Library is unsuccessful. Of course, with the powerful assistance of our community home and abroad, I don't believe this will happen. One more thing. We are now having Mr. Zhou Gang and uh, Mr. Jiang Sha representing the Chinese community to run for the product committee and the technical committee. I hope you will support them. That's all I want to say today. So I give the floor to Mr. Zhou Lei, please. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yes. Yes. Okay. Hello everyone, I'm Lei Zhou from Jiatu, a local library software company in China. I'd like to introduce my company briefly first. Jiatu is a new company founded in 2014. Now Jiatu is a leading enterprise in the library industry in China. Jiatu is committed to introducing the internet thinking into the traditional library industry and building a one-stop leading service platform. Okay, let's move on. I would like to introduce the implementation of Shanghai Library Folio project. This was the first book lent by Folio on April 18th. Uh, Shanghai Library has been focused on Folio for a long time. In November 2019, the project team was established, which includes the staff from Shanghai Library and uh, several companies. The goal of the project is to provide a security service as a priority. In August 2020, we completed the development. And from September to December, we did the preparation for final migration, including deployment, training, configuration, data migration, data synchronization, and third-party integration. 
Then in 2021, we started the migration process and finally launched on April. Uh, the modules we used include user, security, infantry, discovery, which is based on viewfind and the notification. Based on the functional requirements, performance requirements, and the user experience of Shanghai Library and the Chinese customs, we have made a lot of transformation based on the original folio modules and also developed some new modules such as notification. Uh, in terms of metadata, Shanghai Library has also formulated the mapping rules from CMARC and the BBFrame to Codex. Uh, it's a folio technical architecture. Based on the architecture, we add a message-oriented middleware, a Kafka. The system module may write even the message into Kafka for other systems like Horizon to trigger data signalization. And then we add, add another Kafka to, uh, for search engine to harvest data from storage modules. Once uh, one of the difficulties and the highlights in this project is the data signalization. Since we haven't run the whole business in Folio yet, Folio has to run in parallel with the Horizon system. Bibliography and the infantry data are mainly signalized from Horizon to Folio, but the segregation uh, records are signalized in real time and in both directions. When a book is checked out from Folio, the loan record can be seen in Horizon at the same time. And the vice versa, when a book is checked out from Horizon, the same re result can be seen in Folio. Finally, we did a grade level switch. Some of the staff and some of the business switched to Folio without stopping any service. And the others could be moved over later. It's the data size. Uh, uh, in Folio, we include 4.7 million instances, uh, 40 million items, and more than 5 million patrons, 3.3 uh, million open loans. Um, in terms of parameters, there are more than 4,000 locations. Uh, we plan to switch to Folio gradually from a reference reading room to general reading room. And at the end of this year, the new Shanghai Library in Pudong we are open and we are used for the directory. Uh, in the end, I want to sum up. The Shanghai Library Folio project is running like a small community. We put the tasks into several six, uh, including metadata, segregation, use and notification, discovery, data migration, data signalization. Uh, each six has a PO who is a librarian from Shanghai Library, such as Zhou Gang, uh, Xia Cui Jian, Shen Li, and so on. And there are different vendors responsible for different modules. Uh, Jiatu is one of them, as well as Ketu, Yanggu, Weiyun, Afadi, uh, Miji, and so on. Okay, we I'm work so together sorry. to build the uh, Shanghai Library platform. Okay, thank you. I, I'm so sorry, we are out of time. Our next session starts in two minutes. Thank you very much uh, for all of our uh, presenters and for all of the attendees who joined us. And we will see you shortly for the next session. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.